and welcome back to the shop today i'm going to be modifying my yz125 cylinder head i'm gonna be doing it myself right here in the shop um if you're interested in doing this yourself on your own bike i do have it a more of a tutorial on it it was for a yz252 stroke that i did it on but um it, it'll walk you more step by step on this one this is going to be more or less of a, a blast through i'm just going to show you the highlights as i modify this head i'm not going to leave out any of the good stuff don't worry all the good stuff will be in there i'm just saying if you want more of a step by step and all the little details and why you do what you do this that the other thing check the uh in the description there's links to the the video that i put together on a yz250 how to do it and then watch this video as well to see the mild difference differences between this and the yz125 but interesting Got a number 11 here and look at that part number that's crazy whole bunch of ones all right um i'm trying to get a little more power out of her that's that's really what i'm trying to do here and i like the stock power curb the stock power curb is really good i like the way it is on the bottom i like the way it is on the top i like the way it is in the middle don't want to change any of that so i'm looking to keep the compression ratio the same i just want more of the same power so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the squish band clearance um down to I'm thinking about 39 thousandths just under 40 thousandths which is just under a millimeter and um, and then uh, open up the dome back here to get the compression ratio back to stock um, but uh, yeah to get started on this oh by the way when I'm done with this then I'm gonna take it to the track test it out tune it in that'll be at the end of the video and uh, so stay tuned or fast forward if you just want to see the ride Let's get the seat and tank off and get started. Okay, got that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant. Remove these motor mounts, the hose, spark plug and all that. Then we can pull the head off of it. Alright, about to remove this cylinder head. Um, first thing I'm going to do is measure the stock squish band clearance. I'm going to grab them before they all go flying off. I already dropped one down here. But yeah, we'll measure the stock squish band clearance, see where we're at, and then go from there. All right, got the stock cylinder head off. Let me clean things up a little bit and we'll get some solder in there and see what she is stock. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is just try to clean the cylinder, the piston a little bit, the top of it, get rid of any of the loose carbon and stuff. I wanna get a good reading. At least where the uh, where the solder is going to be, be resting. Let me go and get some Scotch Brite and get that cleaned up. All right, I just used a Scotch Brite pad. You can see right here and right here where I'm gonna have the solder laid across the middle here. Just on the edges, I cleaned the carbon off. I know it probably doesn't measure much of anything, but it's just uh, I want to make sure I get a good, accurate reading. Let me grab some solder real quick and we'll measure her. lay some solder right here the piston will come up on it there it goes now I'm going to use the new head for this measurement they should be identical the new and the old one um, but this is the one I, that I'll be cutting anytime I make a measurement he's on, you see how all that room with the play that this head has right there this mo this motor, unlike the new YZ125 or the new or the YZ250 that have these little uh, locating pins in here that kind of guarantee the head goes always goes on in the same position, these 125s don't have that, so there is a lot of slop there. So what I'm going to do is twist the head clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm going to quit tw twist it clockwise as I tighten it up, and that'll kind of ensure that it's centered out. I don't have it all the way to the one end or all the way to the other end, but it'll be kind of centered out. So I'm going to do that. And put the uh, bolts back in it we're gonna test the squish band clearance on her okay I got her bolted down um, on the YZ252 stroke I was able to only use two nuts because they have six total so I was able to use one right here and one right here with this where the, where the uh, solders at but on this one I'm using all of them because there's five bolts and the solder is gonna be uneven to the two that go across here so I just want I think it's just gonna be better to use all I'm not using the the uh, washers for this, you don't need it. We're just testing the squish band. We don't need it to seal any coolant or anything. Let's give it a kick. 
and squish that solder down. I don't think I felt the thing. Let's remember. <laughs> I know it squished it, but let's see. This is um, sixty. This is sixty-one thousand solder that I'm using right now. I wouldn't expect that gap to be that. Uh, -uh. we'll find out, I guess. And uh, I only found it in the range that I'm working for. I found sixty. I think it was sixty-one or sixty-two thousand solder. And then the next smaller size is thirty-one thousand. Thirty-one would have been too small because I'm shooting for about a 39,000 squish band clearance. So I went with the 62 or whatever it was. Um, all right. I'm gonna retrieve that. Well, let's mash it just barely. Let me get the calibers and we'll measure. All right, let's see what we come up with here. Start with the very end. 44,000's there. That's the very end, the part where it angles down. Over here, they got 50. Yeah, 54,000's there. That equals uh, 0.38 of an inch on the, uh, on the top part of the piston, and the part that hangs over is... 111 so hmm now this is my first time doing this bike so um, I don't you know I might go back in and make changes it's just just a preliminary preliminary job see right there I'm get 137 here let me get let me get you close to the piston I'll show you what I mean On the part that where the piston angles down right here, I'm getting about 111, and on the ver on the top up here, I'm getting about 137 of, of, of a millimeter. So, all right, let me give this some thought and get an idea where I want to start. Okay, hmm, give it some thought. I'm kind of leaning towards now that I know that that it already comes a little tighter than I expected with the outer edge being at 1.11 millimeters that equates to my conversion calculator here says that 1.11 millimeters is basically 43 thousandths point 43 thousandths almost 44 thousandths so if I, I originally had it planned to take her to just about 39 thousandths that's about a 4 thousand difference that's not much so I think I know Apex Head and also VHM or whatever, a lot of your aftermarket brands uh, brag about a 35 thousandths. Um, I think I'm going to shoot for that or just maybe above that. I'll be focusing on this part right here, the very edge, because that's that's where I'm getting 111 at. Um, it's, it's a little bit wider up top here. Um, what did we measure it up top at again? I forgot. Let me see. We'll look at that real quick and see where that's at. Okay, I'm getting about 54 thousandths right here on this on this part right here, the flat spot of the squish band, and that equates to about 100 uh, 1.38 millimeters. I'm not going to worry about that spot. That's not that's not the spot I'm going to keep track of. I'm going to keep track of the tighter spot because I don't want the tighter spot, which is the outer edge right here, this angle spot. That's the spot that I'm going to get to 35 thousandths, and. Um, because that's the spot that's going to be the tightest spot so i'm going to focus on the tightest spot um it's always that's what they call a taper a squish band taper meaning it's it, the squish band the clearance for the squish band is going to be tighter on the outer edge and it's going to get fatter as it gets towards the middle here and uh that's for good reason because as as it's squishing the charge into the middle there's less room for it to get it into the dome area because the radius becomes smaller and smaller so that's by design and um, that's a good thing. So we're going to leave that be. All we're going to do is just uh, focus on the outer edge, and I'm going to get I'm going to get that down to 35 thousandths, or just above it. I don't want to go any lower than 35, so I'm going to aim for just above 35 thousandths. So let's get shaving her down. Actually, my bad. Before I touch her, I have to CC it because I need to know what the stock CCs are. So so um, I get the compression ratio right back to stock. So let me go ahead and CC it first. Okay, took some plexiglass, cut out 
drilled out the holes to match the head perfectly so I can bolt her on and CC her. Let's do that. Then layer grease around it so it seals. There she is. I'm going to measure her from here and I'm, I'm just going to bring the water all the way up to the edge to get a measurement. Um, I understand that's not like the most accurate way to get the actual cc's of the head the actual way to be met from the bottom with the spark plug and, and the spark plug hole but for me i'm just looking to copy the same cc so this will do good as a reference to copy the oem cc's after i mill the head to get the squish band right so this will work for what i'm doing here today so let me go ahead and get some water and um get a reading and, and uh get a reference all right, I think I got a good reference point. I won't be able to tell you CCs. The CCs are kind of worn off on this, but I put a mark here. So later on, I'll be able to use this syringe also to uh, bring it back to that mark with full fluid and be able to measure the exact CCs. But at least I know if I fill this up with water, that exact line put that black spot the, the rubber top of the rubber seal to the exact line I can fill the cylinder or the cylinder head here before I go any further make sure there's no air bubbles in the corners work them out all I'm doing is leaning the head over and kind of working the air bubbles out the top When I do that, all right, take the rest of the water here. Basically, I got it set up where it just starts to pour. It, it kind of bubbles up on top of the spark plug hole, and it just starts to creep over the edge. When it does, basically, that's my reference point. If I fill that line up, if I fill the water up to that line, it'll get to this point in the head. So when I work on the head, when I'm done getting the squish where I want it, and it's time to lower the compression ratio back to stock. That's all I have to do is keep lowering it until it does that with this syringe to that point. And that'll be the same compression ratio overall. The same cc's as the stock, which is what I'm shooting for here. So uh, now it's time for me to, I got to balance the head so when I spin it, it doesn't vibrate and stuff. And then start sanding. This is about the best that I can get her balanced. I put these weights on this side to counterbalance the, the uh, extra weight of the mount here at slow speeds you can see a little wiggle but once I get my thumb on here right here I should be able, it should be smooth enough that I can uh, that I can shave it down pretty somewhat balanced so let me go ahead and start shaving her down all right so this is how I'm gonna mill the head I have one of these air fittings that you use for your air tools and I found a socket that perfectly kind of slammed on top of it since down tight I'm gonna take a, a, a swivel here swivel um, for your ratchets 3 8 swivel and my famous black and decker drill that gets so much attention uh, I just put one of these bits on it right here to allow me to and then all I have to do is take the head got that on there I flip the weights around to balance it on this side for the milling part there we go, and uh, got to get some WD-40 on her. That kind of smoothens out the sanding process here. All right, um, $140 head, here we go. Easy does it. almost flying off there let me take a peek at her again all this stuff is covered in much more detail 
on the videos I have linked in the description where I did it on a YZ252 stroke. Ooh, that, that sandpaper cuts pretty gritty. But that's okay, we have some thinner sandpaper, smoother, smoothing her out with her done. Plus, as we do this, this sandpaper will kind of soften up. It's going to lose some of its bite as we keep working at it. You know, matting surface, nice and smooth. Alright, let me go ahead and put this on the bike and see where we're at, because I don't want to overcut it. So I'm going to go ahead and check the squish band clearance with it milled this far, and let's see what it comes up with. Wow, that didn't take long, and it's gotten me close. Again, remember I'm measuring from the very edge here. 0.97. I'm shooting for a 0.9 or 35 thousandths. I'm at 38 thousandths. Let me check the... Hold on. All right, all, right, all it took was just, I mean, literally just a quick <laughs> sanding, and then I, and then I uh, cleaned the surface with some 320 grit to get it a nice, smooth surface, and that did the trick as far as the squish band check this out all right and get it back up in here wait hold on eighty nine thousandths thirty or thirty five thousandths which is about point ninety millimeters which is what I was shooting for Yep, 35 thousandths, 0.89, so that's pretty much it. You know, this is just a tester. If, if I don't, sometimes like, it could take me a few tries going out the track to get exactly what I'm looking for, but this is just a good start. I want to have a good, a good starting platform to try on, and then from there when I get to the track, if I want a little more power, I can tighten up the squish band a little more, or, you know, by milling it a little bit more. If I want a little more bottom end, I can um, uh, work on a head with a little more compression. If I want a little more top end, I can work on a head with a little less compression. So, but this, I'm going to start with the stock compression ratio that it's currently at because I, I feel that's pretty good. And I'm going to start with uh, with a squish band of about 35 thousandths or not or 0.90 millimeters, and that's measuring right here at the at the very end I'm not so much worried about that but just out of curiosity let's see what that came out to I'm gonna measure as close I'm gonna measure as close to, to, to the to the uh, to the transition point right about right about right about here is where I'm gonna measure at first because there is a taper to it which is good for you know to relieve so we got about 43 thousandths right there on that side let's see what the other side measure which it, also another thing I'm finding pretty nice is the heads pretty equal yeah, 42.5, 43, 43.5, all depending on how hard I squeeze it. But it does have a taper, so if I follow it up, like that was point, that was 43, right? If I follow it up, I'll just drag it up just a little bit. It goes to 46, drag it up just a little bit more. It goes to 47, drag it up just a little bit more. It goes to 51. So there is a taper. It basically starts, let me get something to point with here right down here at the very corner it starts at about 35 thousandths and right about here it's about 43 thousandths and right about here it's about 50 thousandths so they have a taper to it and again that's good because it does take a load off the pumping losses of the motor at higher rpms uh, not only does it help alleviate detonation but it also kind of takes the load off the pumping losses so that's good it's a little more taper than i usually run like on a yz252 stroke but this is the 125 we're dealing with a different world so now that I got that done, hmm, now I have to start working on that bowl and uh, relieve some compression. Before I do that, though, I'm going to CC it one more time to see how much more fluid, how much less fluid it holds. And then I'm going to start working on opening that bowl up. By the way, just an idea. If any of you guys have a modified head you'd like me to test out, or Apex head or VHM head or anything you'd like me to test out, I will do a full video review on it and everything. I will bolt it onto my bike, take it out, jet it for that head and do a video review and I will mail it back. It would be really interesting to try it out some other heads because I'm in search for the best that I can get within reason, you know, as far as reliability and and uh, and fuel and stuff. But yeah, I want the best I can get. So I will review heads and give me an opportunity to test them out for myself. Yeah, this is where all the fun starts right here. 
where your fingers get tired put a little WD-40 on it I take these little sandpaper strips this is uh, uh I think this was I forgot what grit this was it's pretty coarse I'll let you know in a minute I'll go look at it what I'm doing is I'm let me get something pointed at with it here hold on I'm mainly working from here to here right now I don't want to fool around much right here because that will raise the roof and the spark plug already ever so slightly protrudes past that point so I don't want to make that any worse or any more I just want to work on from here to here removing this material you'll notice that there's a round edge right here of the radius going from the flat part of the squish band to the dome I'm basically widening up the dome to kind of get rid of that radius. I will not be going onto onto the squish band part because I need that to be as wide as it is. But the radius part, I can I can sacrifice that. I can get rid of that, and with no negative effects on performance. So that's what I'm doing. best I could and I'm just trying not to get any wobble so I can get it as, as even and square as I can so let me keep working at this and I'll be back in a few all right I've gotten this far with it I just see seed it I still have a little more work to do you can see I'm slowly working off that radius right there but trying to keep a smooth transition throughout the whole dome um, give you an idea the stalker here you can see the radius how 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 much there is and you can see over here I'm getting it thinned out so we're getting there so let me keep working at it I'm getting there got to work at it a little bit more but I'm getting close it's getting really really close I mean maybe I just have to remove just a little bit more out of this dome and that should be it actually I think that might be it I'm gonna take one more measurement of the cc's and the squish band just one more time just to double check my work but look at her and of course I'll, I'll give one more just run of the really fine sandpaper right here to smoothen this matting surface out to get rid of the marks right here not that that's necessary but when you spend this much time still getting 35 at the very edge which is good and then right on the flat spot getting about 43 so yeah let me show you the finished product there it is guys my hands are filthy from the job but you know she's looking good after i put it back on the bike and start it up that's gonna be about five hours i have invested in this whole job but um you know i could have bought a head for about 300 bucks and been done with it and you can too you don't have to do all this like I did but I do get satisfaction from doing my own head one's better and that and the other thing but all right let's put her on the bike let's start her up and see how she sounds Whew, I gotta show you the mess this this job makes I got sandpaper on that slab right there let me clean up the mess and oh, there's my lunch I hardly ate any of it let me clean up my mess bolt the head on and start her up Okay, first test fire. Let me warm her up a little bit before I rip into the throttle a few times here how she sounds. Okay, got her nice and warmed up. Start her back up and uh, flip it a few times.
she sounds good. She uh, it kind of reminds me when I do the head mod on the YZ250. It kind of gives that same difference, the feeling of difference versus the stock head. Um, it 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 comes alive with less throttle. It kind of like you know you first crack it open just a little bit, you get a, and then a little bit more, and bang! It just comes right alive. And and it has more snap when you do blip into it hard. It just kind of snaps right into it. So it definitely gives the same type of feeling. Um, obviously the real test is going to be on the track so um, I'm going to load her up tomorrow today's Thursday I'm going to load her up tomorrow park her in the garage for the night take her out Saturday morning Saturday morning going to go back to 74 the same track that I rode her at last week and hopefully the weather's good go out there test it out um, I know I'm going to have to tune the carburetor a little bit for the different head uh, profile oftentimes more often than not when you get the squish band clearance tighter you typically have to go a little bit leaner on the jetting, mainly just the main jet. But I. So, yeah, stay tuned. And uh, here we go. Gonna load her up and take her to 74. Alright, I'm out here at 74, uh, trying out the new head. At first, it threw me a lot of curveballs. It's really uh, humid today. It's almost like a swamp out here. It's running pretty rich. Uh, I've, I've gone down to. First I went to 450 on the main, then 430, but now I'm going back up to 450 just to try, make sure I didn't go too lean. And I went down one meter on the pilot, uh, back to the stock pilot, which I believe is a 40, and that really cleaned up the throttle. Overall, it feels good, um, but I'll give you more of my impressions in a few minutes after I do some more riding on it, and uh, I'll take you on the GoPro ride. Here we go. And there's my wife right there, looking like where's Waldo. This was one of the earlier runs. I had a 450 main jet in it. And a 42.5 pilot. And with this really humid weather, it was just running rich. It kind of just zaps it. Like the life out of the motor when it runs rich. But the head was feeling good. I can feel that it's a good head. I can feel the jetty is definitely rich. The track was really rough today, dry. So typically, normally I can quad that, quad it whenever second go, but today it was just really hard to get the speed up and get over it with the bumps and the dry sand. We got over it a few times, but for the most part, I was tripling it today. But I just wasn't jiving with the wrench, especially when you first roll the throttle. This wasn't coming alive quick enough. I knew I was going to have to make some dead changes. Ooh, I almost went down right there. I don't know how I kept the materials. Knocked my GoPro forward. So from here on out, my GoPro is going to knock forward. I did not know that. I apologize, guys. I, I'm only including this footage so you can hear how the bike sounds because at this point it's not, it's not the best to look at the GoPro angle that far forward. Running strong, just running rich. So here's where I am out of the jetting on the new head. I ended up going down to the 430. I tried the 450 again, 
and um, it's just a really humid day today so I don't I don't it just feels a little bit cleaner and crisper with the 430 um, then I put the 40 pilot jet in it I went from the 42.5 down to the 40 and she's running really nice zippy and clean um, it, it, it seems to be making more power. It's definitely crisper. I, I, I keep comparing it to my wife's bike that it's a, a copy of this bike except the only difference is, is I have the head modified. So I ride her bike, I'll do a couple laps and then I do a couple laps of mine and kind of get a comparison and just to see where I'm going because our memory can play tricks on us sometimes so it is nice to have two bikes here you know, that are very similar to compare it to. But uh, the main thing I notice is, is a tip in the throttle, it's a little bit crisper and cleaner or when you already got the RPMs up, like when you're going in a corner, you just got, your RPMs are up, already spinning. When you first go to crack into it, it's a little crisper and cleaner. And then it seems to make more power at the very tip top of the RPMs right before it signs off. But then here's, here's where it gets tricky. At the same time it seems to start making more power, it seems like that pipe just kind of gives up. Um, it's more of a feeling thing. I, you know, I've been doing this for a lot of years, so you kind of, you, you know, you, you, you have memories of past bikes where you ran into the same scenario and you kind of know the situation. You've been down that road before. Um, I know that these stock pipes are, are, they claim they're the best for mid, uh, uh, bottom to mid, so it's more of a bottom mid pipe out of all the pipes, like if you bought an FMF Pro Circuit or any type of Bill's pipe or whatever, the stock's typically going to make a little bit more bottom end. There's my friend Offie right over here. And uh, typically going to make a little more bottom end. And uh, hold on. Update! Woo! And so, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I got a pro circuit pipe coming for it. I think that's going to complement the head. I think the head's just a little too, um, how do you say, it's, it's a little too aggressive for the pipe. So, I got a pro circuit pipe coming in and gonna pop that on next week at Dade City Motocross to see how that does but for now let's take it for a ride here's another GoPro footage take her back out on the track <laughs> This is what the 430 main jet and the 40 pilot winner jetty bike really came to like. They were quad in there, it's got some good drive there. That seemed to be the jetty for this day and this setup. And there, wife. I really apologize for the GoPro footage of the camera being too low. I'm gonna have to pay more attention to that in my next videos. Sorry guys. But yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear it the sound, but that jetty right there it ran much better than the Richard jetty had earlier. that GoPro just keep getting knocked lower and lower. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
back in the man cave just got back from the track um, just to wrap it up real quick my thoughts uh, first I want to say I got the jetting squared away really well it was a really humid day out there and uh, and that kind of makes jetting a little bit more difficult when it's that hot and humid because things aren't so cut and dry when it's like that but uh, I got the jetting really good interestingly enough stock stock jetting of a, a, a 40 pilot and the 430 main did the trick. Now that was in this humid weather, so I can imagine maybe when it gets cooler outside, I'll probably have to go up richer a little bit. But for right now with this head mod and this pipe, that's where I'm at. Um, and I kind of expected a little more out of the head. I mean, it did good and it definitely makes more power. But in my mind, I was kind of expecting more because I'm used to doing this more in the YZ252 stroke where when you do the head mod on that bike versus stock, it's like a good two horsepower gain. But then I had to remind myself, I was also, I'm also dealing with a bigger motor on the YZ250. This is only a 125, so your gains are going to be smaller. I, it, it felt like maybe maybe a horsepower more It's what it felt like with the head mod. But I also reminded myself too that with um, high revving bikes like 125s, more than your big bores on your small bores, it's more about the package and its individual items. And um, that pipe, I think is my bottleneck at this point I really do um, the stock pipe is better known for mid to bot bottom to mid and I'm looking for top end pulls what I'm looking for and um, with good solid mid but top and pull with good solid mid so I think I think to complete this like on my YZ 252 stroke I can tell you that when I put the stock pipe on I it, it, it's 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 when I put the pro circuit pipe on versus the stock there's clearly a big difference like it really allows the the motor to shine when I put that pipe on, and um, and and it revs out better. It's crisper. It's zingier. Yes, the stock pipe on the YZ250 makes more torque off the bottom, the very bottom. But right once you get out of that bottom, that pro circuit makes the head work that I did on that bike really shine. And uh, so I had to remind myself that you know before I get bummed out that it feels like I only gained one horsepower with all that work and I was like no I'm still running the stock pipe here and I know these bikes it's a package so I'm gonna keep working at her I got the pro circuit pipe the works pipe too um, got one ordered up and on the way I'm hoping it'll be here by next weekend because I'm going out in Dade City next weekend I would really like I just want to stay rolling on this so I'd really like to have that pipe here so I can um, keep keep moving forward because I where some people like to throw everything at the bike all at one time, I, I kind of like going step by step and seeing how the individual changes change everything. And I, I know what each change does. Was it was it a good thing or was it a bad thing? So that's why I'm kind of doing one step at a time. Like I could have ordered the pipe already, you know, and, and when I ordered the silencer, but I want to do one thing at a time. So I got the head done got it jetted in it's good it's clean it's crisp that's one thing i can say my wife rode my bike we swap bikes you know hers is pretty much identical to mine except i have the head mod that's the only thing different between mine and her bike at this point and uh she claims that it felt you know like it makes a little more power and stuff and, and the rpm range that she uses it in so um so yeah the pipe will be in next week take her out to Dade city and I might have to do some more jetting changes out there, but with the pipe, and let's see where we can get her. So stay tuned. I'm going to keep tinkering with her until I get her where I want. Appreciate you guys watching this, and I'll catch you next week or sooner.